That's me, Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, doing the best job in the world. Fixing things. Wonderful. Usually I don't have a crowd or cheering from the peanut gallery. So why the big fuss this time? Well, it all started this morning. The day started like any other, with a garage bell ring. Ah. I had a visitor. I love having visitors. It was Mr. Lion. He seemed upset. Mr. Monkey, I cannot believe it. I simply cannot believe it. Believe what? That. Look! Well, what do you know? Your horn's gone. Where did it go, Mr. Lion? I have no idea. Yesterday it was there, and today, in its place, I found this. A roll of packing tape? How very odd. I had made Mr. Lion the perfect little horn. And I had bolted it down real tight. How could this horn just disappear? And why was it replaced with a roll of packing tape? Thank you, Mr. Lion. Now there's only one thing to do. I'll make you a new horn. But first I'll need my... Trusty Monkey! Cardboard box. My monkey wrench is missing. Something fishy was going on. Mr. Lion's horn was missing. And so was my trusty monkey wrench. I had a funny feeling that they weren't just missing. They were... Stolen! <gasps> stolen? Mm-hmm. There's a thief in town, and I'm gonna find him. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Detective, was on the case. Say, Mr. Monkey, do you mind if I join you? I'm always game to solve a mystery, and it gives me a reason to wear all these disguises. Let's go! And with that, our search for the thief began. First, we found Miss Poodle. Her hair was frizzy, and she herself was frazzled. Was she our thief? Oh, Mr. Monkey, my hairbrush is missing. Nope, she was not our thief. Have you seen it? I'm afraid not, Miss Poodle. What do you think happened to it? I'm not sure. But when I reached for my hairbrush this morning, I picked up this instead. Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, my! A ball of string! It's a clue and a delightful play toy. Mr. Lion, I didn't see you there. Do you mind if I take this? Go right ahead. So I took the ball of string and the picture of Ms. Poodle's beloved hairbrush and promised to help find it. Sometime later, we came upon Ms. Owl. I was surprised to see her awake at this hour. She's usually a night owl, very suspicious. Maybe she was our thief. Who? Who? Mr. Monkey, I need your help. Have you seen my sunglasses? Or not? I usually keep my sunglasses right here, but all that's inside is... Wrapping paper. Another clue. I need my sunglasses for flying and landing. Just look at this terrible parking job. So close to this brick wall. 
Sorry, I haven't seen your sunglasses, Ms. Owl. But I'll take this photo and the wrapping paper and keep my eyes peeled for you. Then, we stumbled upon Coach Moose, who was acting suspiciously. Oh, hi there. You're just the monkey I was hoping to see. Really? Why is that? Did you maybe want to give me something? Or some things? Uh, no. I need your help to fix my problem. Wouldn't you know it, I can't find a Junior Rangers ice hockey trophy. It used to be back here, but in its place I found these scissors. Strange, eh? Indeed it was. I took the scissors and told him that I'd keep a lookout for the trophy. Careful there, Mr. Monkey. You've got a T-Rex tail in you, and he looks hungry. It was troubling, to say the least. Everyone in town was missing something. We had clues, but no idea who the thief was. And now I had a partner dressed like a daisy. So, why all the different disguises, Mr. Lion? Because I don't want to be recognized. Makes sense. Mr. Crocodile? Ahoy, Mr. Monkey! Are you here about my missing anchor? Your anchor's missing? It is indeed! What's curious is how a heavy anchor could go missing. Just like that! What's even more curious is how this giant daisy has suddenly appeared on my dock. Yes, it's been a very strange day, Mr. Crocodile. A lot of things in town are missing and have been replaced with other things. Like packing peanuts? These were in the spot where my anchor was. Another clue. We were getting closer. I could feel it. Mind if I take a look around for more clues? Be my guest. Ugh. Look, footprints. Footprints? I can assure you those aren't mine. I have cute little crocodilian feet. And those are not them. Then this could be the clue we're looking for. The thief's footprints. Let's follow them, Mr. Lion. Come on! A daisy named Lion. Curiouser and curiouser. We followed the footprints along the dock and headed down a deserted alleyway. Then suddenly, the footsteps stopped. How can footprints just stop? I don't know. And just like that, we had a chase. After him, Mr. Lion! We chased Mr. Chameleon, but he was one sly reptile. We thought we lost him but Mr. Lion had an idea. My, what a big roar you've got, little old lady. Give it up, chameleon. Give what up, Mr. Monkey? You know what I'm talking about. Where's the hairbrush, the trophy, the anchor, the sunglasses? My horn! And my monkey wrench. I have no idea what you're talking about. But we tracked your footprints, and you're acting all sneaky. Zigzagging around town, climbing fences. You must be hiding something. Not at all. I was simply soaking my feet in the water. And then I saw how late it was. I needed to get home fast.
But you know the old rhyme? Step on a crack, break your mother's back. The dock was full of cracks. I didn't want to hurt my dear mum. But what about hiding against the wall? And jumping the fence? I'm a chameleon, a camouflage. I took a shortcut. Is that a crime? Well, if it is, then lock me up, Mr. Monkey. <sighs> Looks like we've hit a dead end. We're never going to find the thief who left a box, a ball of string, packing tape, wrapping paper, scissors, and packing peanuts. A box, a ball of string, packing tape, wrapping paper, scissors, and packing peanuts, you say? I might know someone you should talk to. What do you know about this box, ball of string, packing tape, wrapping paper, scissors, and these packing peanuts? Tell us everything you know. Oh! <laughs> what a cutie wooty. Boop. <laughs> oh, now that you mention it, I do remember a customer who bought all the packing materials I had. <laughs> who was it? Sure, someone new in town, a little guy. What would a tiny new neighbor want with all those packing materials? I had some thinking to do. Here's what we know. We have a number of things missing. We found a few clues in their place. Our suspect is male, so he's not these two. He's also little. And he's new in town. And at that moment, I knew who the thief was. We had to move fast. Our suspect had flown the coop, but I knew where to go. Ms. Squirrel, you tried to throw us off your scent, but we know you took everyone's things and left items from your store behind. You're the thief. There's nobody new in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, tell that to the new guy next door. It turns out Miss Squirrel was telling the truth. There was someone new in the neighborhood, and his home was wrapped in clues. Uh, sorry for calling you a thief. Our mistake. A thousand apologies. Hey, uh, can I help you? We're looking for some things that we think you may know about. Like, uh, what? Like these. I promise you, Viking, I don't know what you're talking about. Then what would you call those? They look suspiciously like a boat anchor. A hockey trophy. My horn! And my trusty... Monkey wrench! <laughs> you got me. You got me. I did it. I took it all. Every last thing. I'm so sorry. We found our thief and everything we were looking for. But I had just one question. Why? And then he sang like a canary. Well, I like packing things. I love it, actually. But I'd already packed everything I own. So I started taking other things to pack. I don't know how to... 
to stop! <sighs> I need help. And help is what I did. I came up with a plan. Mr. Lion and I helped Packrat start a packing business. Now, he could pack anything he wanted and didn't have to steal anything ever again. It was all on the up and up. The case was tied up in a neat little bow. Well, almost. We just had one more thing to do. Everyone got their things back. And for me, it was time to get back to work. To think, if I hadn't cracked the case, I almost couldn't do my job. Get a boy, Mr. Monkey, get a boy. Wonderful. The best job in the world. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Detective. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was making his favorite snack, a banana and peanut butter sandwich, when all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. He loves having visitors. Who could it be? It's two visitors, Mr. Mouse and Mr. Pig. Hello, Mr. Mouse. Good to see you. Mr. Pig, how are things? Well, Mr. Monkey, we're... we're... In a bit of a pickle. Gosh, I love pickles. They go so well with a nice cheese sandwich. Mmm, yum. We have pickles at the house. But you know we can't go back to our house. What do you mean you can't go back to your house? You live there. Well, all our friends are there. Well, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. Why don't you want to see your friends? Oh, it's not them. Here's the thing, Mr. Monkey. We absolutely love making food. And we love having our friends over to eat our food. <laughs> but now we've made so much food and had so many friends over that our house is a mess. It's a... a... a pigsty! It's absolutely a pigsty. And I should know. I'm a pig. And if there's one thing we don't like... It's a mess. So, we thought you might have some ideas about how to help us share our love of food with our friends, but without making such an awful mess. Hmm. I could recommend a good carpet cleaner. Or maybe... Let me see. Mr. Monkey checks the van. He checks the steering wheel. He checks the back of the van. He checks the windows. Stay right there. I have an idea. Mr. Monkey heads off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Pig and Mr. Mouse love making food for their friends at their house. But they don't love the mess their house becomes after their friends come over and eat the food. How can Mr. Pig and Mr. Mouse continue to make delicious food for their friends, but without the messy house that comes with it? Instead of inviting their friends to their house to eat, they can take the food to them. Their house will stay perfectly clean, no messes to clean up. Mr. Monkey has an idea, but he's going to need some materials. Mr. Monkey needs two poles, a window curtain, lots of nuts and bolts, and of course, his trusty monkey wrench. Mr. Monkey gets to work. 
first, Mr. Monkey cuts a rectangle. Then, Mr. Monkey hangs the curtain. He secures it with one, two, three, four bolts. He raises the curtain. And now for the final touches. Mr. Monkey is done. Wow, uh, Mr. Monkey, you put a window in our van. But how will that help us with our messy house? Well, you love sharing food with all your friends, but you don't like the mess your friends leave in your house. So now, instead of your friends coming to your house for food, you can take the food to your friends. I've put a kitchen inside your van. What an incredible idea! If we bring food to our friends, there's no mess to clean up in our house. Thank you so much, Mr. Monkey. Let's go and share our love of food with all our friends. Ready to roll. Bye, Mr. Monkey. We See you later. There goes two satisfied customers. And with that, Mr. Monkey finishes making his sandwich. And a big mess. Uh-oh. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was packing for his trip to the Monkey Mechanic Convention at Banana Beach, when suddenly, the garage bell rang. A visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors, and he knows exactly who it is. It's Mr. Chameleon. Hi, Mr. Chameleon. Well, hello there, Mr. Monkey. All ready for your trip? Oh, yes, I can't wait. Thanks again for taking care of the garage while I'm away. No worries, Mr. Monkey. I came prepared. <laughs> now remember, if anyone comes in with a problem, just tell them I'll be back in the morning and we'll help them then. No worries, Mr. Monkey. Your garage is in good hands. I've got this. Terrific. See you in the morning. Bye, Mr. Monkey. With that, Mr. Monkey leaves for his monkey mechanic convention. Mr. Chameleon, Chameleon Mechanic. That's got a nice ring to it. Oh, Mr. Chameleon has a visitor. Who could it be? Why, it's Coach Moose, Ms. Squirrel, Miss Cow, and Mr. Husky. Hiya, everybody. Welcome to Mr. Monkey, uh, Mr. Chameleon, Chameleon Mechanic. How may I be of service? Hi. Hi, Mr. Chameleon. Is Mr. Monkey here? I have a problem. Oh, Mr. Monkey went on a little overnight trip. He'll be back in the morning. But, uh, maybe there's some way I can help you? After all, how hard could it be? I can help all of you. Tell me your problems. Well, my car broke down and it won't move and I've got to go buy more nuts. Car won't move, got it. I've been taking my sled to the supermarket, but when I pull my sled home, all my groceries fall off. Food falls off sled. No problem. My hockey team wants to skate into summer, but there's no ice to skate on. Mm-hmm. A problem that seemingly has nothing to do at all with your vehicle. Piece of cake. There's so much corn to harvest, and I can't get all the work done if I take breakfast, lunch, and dinner breaks. Your tractor needs to be working while you eat. Shouldn't be a problem. So, so can, can you, you help, help us, Mr. Chameleon? 
absolutely. I can fix all of it. I've totally got it. I just, uh, need a plan. I know. I'll head over to Mr. Monkey's workbench. That's how it works. He usually heads over there and comes back with a plan. All right, I'm here. And I guess I'm just supposed to wait for a plan to arrive. Shouldn't take too long. Being a mechanic is super easy. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Hey, a pencil. Maybe if I start doodling on this blue paper, the plan will arrive. <laughs> ah, brilliant, Mr. Chameleon, if I do say so myself. Ah, no, that's not a brilliant plan. That's just a lovely rendering of me on a skateboard. Maybe the plan is a uh, telescope. Ah, <laughs> I know, trampolines. That'll solve all the problems. Wait, space age technology. They're always talking about that. I should try polys or I had bouncy shoes. Bananas. Bananas can fix any problem, right? What about this wrench thingy? He always seems to use that. But what do I even do with it? Hey, Mr. Chameleon. How's it coming along there, champ? Oh, Miss Squirrel. I'm glad you're here. I figured it all out, Miss Squirrel. Come and look at this. The repairs just keep coming, Miss Squirrel. There's no solution because the repairs just keep coming. They won't stop. They'll never stop. Okay, I'll just leave you to it then. <laughs> Wake up, Mr. Chameleon, dude. What? What? What's this? Uh, you seem to have lost your gosh darn mind there, Mr. Chameleon. So uh, we got to talking, you know, and decided to fix each other's vehicles, thinking it might help you out there, eh? Is that a tea kettle? Oh yeah, see last time I was here, Mr. Monkey put a bunch of tea kettles on my snowmobile. And I figured Miss Cow could use one to make tea or hot soup while she drove her tractor. That way she could eat while still driving her tractor and get all her work done. Wow, great idea. Sure is. And last time I was here, Mr. Monkey hooked me up with solar panels to make my tractor move without gas. I reckon solar panels would make Miss Squirrel's broken down car move. Amazing. And last time I was in, Mr. Monkey made boxes for all of my nuts when I kept losing track of them. So I did the same thing for Mr. Husky. Now his groceries won't fall off his sled. And Mr. Monkey made me wheels for my sled, so I could use it in the summer. So I thought Coach Moose's hockey team could use wheels on their skates. Now they can skate in the summer. Ah, but I didn't help at all. Some Mr. Chameleon, chameleon mechanic I turned out to be. Actually, you did kind of help. Once you fell asleep in the middle of the floor, we realized that rather than waiting for someone else to solve our problems, we could solve them together. So what you're saying is, you couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, there go some very satisfied customers. Good morning, Mr. Chameleon. Things sure look like they were busy around here. How'd it go? Easy peasy, Mr. Monkey. You could say it pretty much took care of itself. Anyway, I'll be on my way. Gotta see if there's anyone else out there who needs my help. 
It's all about teamwork, Mr. Monkey. Teamwork. Welcome home. And with that, Mr. Monkey gets back to work. What happened to my workbench? Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was getting ready for Valentine's Day. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. Mr. Monkey has a visitor. Who could it be? It's Miss Monkey. Oh, uh, what a surprise. H hello there, Miss Monkey. Hello, Mr. Monkey. What can I do for you today? a dilemma, Mr. Monkey. You see, I have these two scooters. I can ride one scooter. And I can ride the other scooter. But I can't ride both scooters together. Oh, what's the point of owning two scooters if I can only use one at a time. Is there any way you can help me, Mr. Monkey? That is a problem, Miss Monkey. Let me take a look at these scooters. Mr. Monkey checks the scooters. He checks the handlebars. All seems to be working there. He checks the tires on the first scooter. Then the tires on the second scooter. They appear to be in working order. He even checks the scooter decks. Seems sturdy. Everything seems to be in working order, Miss Monkey. Well, of course they work just fine, but it sure would be nice to use them together. Mr. Monkey has an idea. Miss Monkey, I think I may have a solution to your problem. Would you like to join me at the workbench and we can figure it out together? <laughs> Let's go, Mr. Monkey! And with that, Mr. Monkey and Ms. Monkey head to Mr. Monkey's workbench. Let's see. Miss Monkey has two scooters, but she can only scoot around on one of them at a time. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out a way that Ms. Monkey can use both scooters together. He could put the two scooters together and make one wide scooter. No, that won't work. The scooter is too wide to scoot on. Mr. Monkey could put the scooters back to back, but then Ms. Monkey wouldn't know if she was coming or going. Mr. Monkey has an idea, but he's going to need some supplies. Mr. Monkey needs two pipes, two flags, a red one and a blue one, two nuts, and finally, two bolts. That just leaves one more thing. His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. Mr. Monkey places the blue flag on top of the first pipe and then he places the red flag on top of the second pipe. Then Mr. Monkey attaches the first pipe to the first scooter with a nut and a bolt. And then he attaches the second pipe to the second scooter with his last nut and bolt. Um, Mr. Monkey, is it finished? Yes, all done. The problem is you have two scooters, but only one of you. But if there were two monkeys to ride the scooters... Then they could both ride the scooters together. Mr. Monkey, would you like to join me for a scooter ride in the park? I'd be honored, Miss Monkey.
Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was checking his map to chart out the quickest route to the fruit stand so he could pick up his next bunch of bananas. When suddenly, the garage bell rang. That means there's a visitor. Who could it be? Why, it's Ms. Armadillo, the delivery truck driver. Hello, Mr. Monkey. This is Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic's garage, right? Yes, it is, Ms. Armadillo. <sighs> that is the first bit of good news I've had all day. See, I've been driving my delivery truck since first thing this morning trying to get here. It takes my truck so long to get anywhere, and I still have so many more deliveries today. Oh, can you help me? That's terrible. A truck should help you get somewhere in a short time. It shouldn't take a long time. Let me take a look. Mr. Monkey inspects the truck. He checks the engine. It seems fine. He checks the tires. They're full of air. He checks the turn signal, left and right. Both are working great. Your truck is in perfect working order, Ms. Armadillo. Oh, it's not my truck that's slowing down my deliveries, Mr. Monkey. The problem is, I keep getting my lefts and rights, ups and downs, and easts and wests all mixed up. And then I end up just driving around the same places over and over and over again. And it takes me forever to figure out where I'm going. Hmm. Mr. Monkey needs to figure this out. Off to his workbench. Let's see. Ms. Armadillo is having a difficult time delivering packages. Because her sense of direction is all mixed up. Hmm. When hikers are walking through the woods and don't want to get lost, they mark trees and rocks to know where they've been. Mr. Monkey has an idea. He'll just need some supplies. He'll need two pieces of wood, a paintbrush, some nuts and bolts, and a whole lot of paint. And of course, he'll need his trusty monkey wrench. Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, he uses the nuts and bolts to attach the two pieces of wood and connects it to the back of Ms. Armadillo's truck. Next, Mr. Monkey attaches the paintbrush. Oh. Finally, he attaches a paint can at the top of the wood. There you go, Ms. Armadillo. Fantastic! Um, what is it? Well, I couldn't think of anything that would help you get to where you're going, but I did make something that can tell you where you've been. See? Wherever you drive, you'll leave a line behind you. Now you always know where you've been. Give it a try. Now you know you've been to Mr. Monkey's garage. Oh, thank you, Mr. Monkey. Now I can roll out and finish my deliveries. Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey returns to his banana map. Yep, banana marks the spot. <laughs> Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was guessing the weight of his bushel of bananas, when suddenly, the garage bell rang. Who could it be? It's Mr. Coyote, the carnival barker. Step right up, Mr. Monkey, step right up! Hurry, hurry, hurry! I need your help! I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying, Mr. Coyote. What seems to be the problem? Cracks and scrapes, bents and dents, Mr. Monkey. My cars have got them all, and I don't know what's to be done about it. Uh, which cars? I don't see any. Why, my bumper cars!
Sure, the kids are having fun, but any more bumps like these and it'll spell disaster. They'll go from bumper cars to broken cars. Hmm, let me take a look at them. Mr. Monkey checks one of the bumper cars. He checks the battery. It looks okay. Then he checks the steering wheel. It turns all right. He even checks the pedals. They go and stop just fine. So, Mr. Monkey, what's wrong with my bumper cars? Step right up and tell me. Don't be shy. Well, the bumper cars work just fine. The problem is... There's nothing on them to bump with. They're just crashing cars. Well, if this ain't just a dilly of a pickle, what can I do, Mr. Monkey? Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Let's see. Mr. Coyote's bumper cars are supposed to bump and bounce, but instead, they crash and crack. What Mr. Coyote needs is something to cushion the outside of his bumper cars to soften the impact when they bump. Mr. Monkey has a plan. He just needs some soft, bouncy materials. If Mr. Monkey covers the outside of the bumper cars with something soft and bouncy, that would keep the bumper cars from breaking. He'll also need some rope to keep them from falling off the bumper cars. And of course, he'll need... His trusty monkey wrench! Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, he uses his monkey wrench to get a spare tire down from the ceiling. He then finds a mattress, an inflatable pool tube, and a bunch of rope. Folks, feast your eyes upon the greatest spectacle you've ever seen. A monkey repairs a batch of bashed and broken bumper cars. Mr. Monkey stretches the tire around the first bumper car. Next, he gets the pool tube around the second bumper car. Now that's a winning ring toss if I ever seen one. You get a prize! <laughs> Mr. Monkey then inflates the pool tube, and ties it in place. Mr. Monkey folds the mattress in half and ties it together, and puts it around the last bumper car, wrapping it nice and tight. And that's a wrap, folks. Mr. Monkey, the bumper cars are looking simply bumpy. Go ahead and give them a try. All right, kids, it's time for the thrill ride of a lifetime. That how do you do, Mr. Monkey? You saved my bumper cars from breaking. I can't thank you enough, but I can upgrade your prize to the big cuddly monkey. All right, kids, let's get these bumper cars back to the carnival. Another satisfied customer, and with that. It's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to guessing the weight of his bananas. <laughs>